Praise the Lord. We're so glad everyone's with us today. And we're going to ask him to bless us and touch us today as we speak his word. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the anointing we feel in this place today. Your presence we feel and we desire. And Father, I pray for your word today as it goes forth. You promised that your word would not return void, but it would accomplish that which you purpose. And we believe that and we speak that in Christ's name. And everybody said, Amen. If you remember last week, I mentioned that in the 15th century, Mark, Martin Luther preached justification. God was restoring the feast of the Passover. John Wesley, later on, preached on sanctification, and God was restoring the feast of unleavened bread, leaven being a, a type of sin. Get the leaven out of Israel, out of our lives, is the type that we see in the Scripture. In our time, in our period, since Azusa Street, God has been, I believe, restoring the Feast of Pentecost and bringing a fresh fire from heaven. And I think he's bringing that Feast of Pentecost, he's restoring that feast to prepare for a third great awakening and for the return of Jesus Christ. How many believe that is possible? I really do believe that. In Acts 2, fire came from heaven. In Exodus 19, on Mount Sinai, there was smoke, and the Lord descended upon it in fire. Today, we want to talk about, in this renewal of the Spirit, in this restoration of the Feast of Pentecost, the rise of a prophetic army is taking place, and we need to be aware of it. We need to be able to articulate, to talk about it, the rise of a prophetic army. With the restoration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit, comes some good things. Spirit-filled worship, praise, miracles, healing, conviction of sin and repentance, and the restoration of the prophetic voice. You see, when the Holy Spirit is poured out according to Joel chapter 2, which we'll talk about later, Joel says when the Spirit is poured out, prophecies and dreams and visions will come. Amen? Amen. With the prophetic, with the restoration of the renewal of the Spirit comes worship that is characterized by a Spirit-led and Spirit-fed worship. In fact, even myself in my first of my ministry, I was asked to come and speak at East Tennessee State University, and they wanted me to speak on the characteristics of spirit-filled charismatic worship and the difference of that as opposed to other styles of worship. And I was asked to go to the philosophy department. Over 200 people came to that session. And here I was, a young man, didn't know what I was doing. And I came there only in the grace and the touch of God to speak to these educated people of the philosophy department, unbelievable, about the characteristics of spirit-filled worship because it had become known around the world that God was restoring the renewal of the spirit. Over 20 million Catholics worldwide experienced the renewal of the Holy Spirit according to missionologists that do statistics of that sort. When the renewal of the Holy Spirit takes place, miracles happen. Somebody say amen. amen. Restoration of the prophetic voice begins to emerge. 
as King Belshazzar saw a mysterious handwriting, encrypted message on the wall of the royal palace. The king of Babylon summons Daniel, a prophet, regarded for his ability to interpret dreams. Troy Anderson says today the handwriting is on the wall again. <laughs> But it, just as Daniel helped solve problems and interpret dreams in ancient times, God is raising up an army of prophetic leaders to offer hope and help release the next great move of God in our land. Somebody believe that that is true? We need people today to be able to speak on what's going on. Just as the king of Babylon needed someone to interpret what was being written on the wall. Troy says the writing is on the wall again and we need people and God is raising up an army of leaders to offer hope and help us release the next great move of the Spirit. In our troubled world, Jesus warned us about what is coming in the last of the last days. Some are prophesying a great awakening, others are seeing a great shaking and I personally believe both is happening at the same time time. Amen? While we see a great shaking going on in the world, I do believe God is bringing a great awakening as well. We saw some of that yesterday in Washington, D.C. John Elkhart, overseer of Crusader Ministries, said some things don't happen unless prophets are involved. There has been a great amount of prayer worldwide for revival and awakening. And I believe God is answering those prayers by raising the level of the prophetic. Listen, in Ezekiel 37, the word says in verse 4, And again I say unto you, prophesy to these dead bones. And I said, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. We need men and women to stand up and speak and decree what God wants to do and what God is doing. The new army of prophets, like the sons of Issachar, who understands the times, 1 Chronicles 12, 32, issuing corrections, warning, teachings, just as they did in Bible times. Notice verse 32 of 1 Chronicles 12. From the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders who had understanding of the times, and they knew how to tell Israel what to do do and where to go and what to think of what was going on at that time. Listen, when the word of the Lord comes forth under the prophetic voice, dead bones live again. Come on. New life comes. New life comes. If you believe in miracles and healing, how can you not believe in prophets? God is raising up a new wave of prophets to sound a trumpet of warning, to prophesy to the walking dead and speaking new life to those dead bones. Come on. I have to admit, I've had to deal with flaky people all my life in ministry. And sometimes, if you're not careful, you can get so bogged down and discouraged by dealing with flaky people that you discount the real. And I was, during the charismatic renewal, I mean, they were casting demons out of chairs and out of everything you can imagine. And the Lord spoke to me during the charismatic renewal and said, don't get distracted by the fringe, because there'll always be the fringe. And there'll always be the flaky going on, but look at the fruit and take your eyes off of the fringe and look at the fruit of what I'm doing, God said to me. Amen. From then on, I begin to take my eyes off of the fringe that can always be there, the fringe, but look at the fruit of what God is doing and what God is speaking. And that changed my life. 
I begin to go to a lot of meetings. I begin to speak and teach Catholic prayer meetings. I remember one I was teaching at, and the priest came. And he said, you, you, you guys are not supposed to be doing this without, a, without having priests here on a regular basis. And he came that night, and we had to kind of let him understand that there's a little thing called the priesthood of the believer. And he was kind of interested in that. <laughs> he said, I need to know more about that. He was very kind in, in many ways. Troy Anderson goes on to say, today's prophetic believers are rising up as a great intercessory army to prepare the way of the Lord. God is calling a global community of prophetic people to arise and decree revival. Some have felt discouraged, but they're receiving a touch from heaven. Others are recognizing the dormant gifts of the, the, dormant gifts of the Spirit, such as the simple gift of prophecy used for edification, exhortation, and comfort. God wants to use people. He used to, wants to use ordinary people. He wants to come upon you with a prophetic voice. 1 Corinthians 14, 3. But he who prophesies speaks unto men to edification or to build up and to exhortation to implore people or comfort or consolation. God wants to speak. I mean, have you heard of Cindy Jacobs? I know, Terry, you probably heard of Cindy Jacobs and others here today. Co-founder of the Generals International. A great intercessory prayer organization with hundreds of thousands of people that are part of that. She says, I see a prophetic church rising in the midst of a culture that seems to be growing darker by the day. As the world is falling apart, God is raising an army of the prophetic voice to speak to the culture, to speak to the issues at hand today. Prophets are a threat to the works of darkness. Come on. Prophets are a threat. The Word of God is a threat. Prayer is a threat to the works of darkness. Praying in the Spirit is a threat to the works of darkness. Jezebel hated prophets, especially Elijah. Come on. 1 Kings 19, Ahab told Jezebel that Ahab had called fire down from heaven and killed all her prophets, her prophets, the prophets of Baal. And Jezebel said, send this message to Eli Elijah that by tomorrow he's dead meat. I'm coming after him. The Bible says Elijah went 80 miles. He outrun the horses and went 80 miles to get away from that woman. She was a fierce, fierce woman, evidently. And she went to the dogs, of course. She was actually eaten by the dogs later on. Kind of gruesome, but that's what happened to her. Some of the new breed of the prophetic people, young and old, are declaring and decreeing the greatest awakening ever. ever. I think we have to be careful sometimes not to focus on just doom and gloom prophecies, even though they may be legitimate. Listen, the, pro the, 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 the judgments of God are coming, and they're coming quick enough. But you, we got to believe that God has something more in store for this world than just the doom and gloom prophets or judgments that are coming. And they may be legitimate words from the Lord. All prophecies must be put in the test of Scripture and time. I added that later. We must check all prophecies against Scripture and time. We must put all things in perspective. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God speaks his heart. It's Yahweh who says to you. I said, it's Yahweh who says to you. I've got plans for you. I've got peace for you. I've got a future for you. I've got hope for you. God speaks his heart. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. You see, it's not just judgment that's coming. God has plans for people. God has a future for people. God has hope for people. 
Judgment will come quick enough. Sometimes we become too hyper-focused on the judgments of God when the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. And the testimony of Jesus is grace and redemption. That means the prophetic ministry needs to be rooted in grace and redemption. God is a God of grace and redemption. He wants to redeem this world. He wants to bring hope to this world. He wants to bring grace and mercy to this world. We as the body of Christ should expect to see God fulfill his promises of Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17 that he would pour out his spirit in the last days and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. One translation was interesting. I, I have a Bible that has 26 translations and one was interesting when I read Joel 2.28 and Acts 2.17 which is the fulfillment of what Joel said in 2.28 is repeated again by Peter in 217 of Acts but it says it this way your sons and daughters shall become prophets your sons and daughters shall become prophets shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and praise God the old men are not left out they are going to dream dreams come on Joel's prophecy indicates that when the Spirit pours out, he empowers the average people to speak prophetically. See, in the Old Testament, the, the Holy Spirit only came upon the prophets and the priests and the kings. And in the Old Testament, there were only so many prophets. Now, there were a hundred that were hid in caves from Jezebel because she was trying to kill them all. But there was only so many prophets in the Old Testament time. And, and that's, that's something to take notice of. And the only ones that experienced the Holy Spirit to come upon them was the prophets and the priests and the kings. But in the New Testament, Joel says it's going to be different. It's going to be the sons and the daughters. As many, as many as the Lord God shall call it will be poured out upon them. So in the Old Testament, so you have a, a few hundred prophets, but in the New Testament, it's many as the Lord God shall call up to our day. Think about it. In the time of Azusa Street, missionologists had said 750 million people came out of the Azusa Street revival. 750 million. Come on, people. That's a lot of people. God took a blind man named Dr. Seymour, a black man, partially blind. He comes into Los Angeles on a train, and he starts having meetings in the backyard, people sitting on crates. Later they moved to a, a livery stable building. But out of that, humble beginnings, people in the backyard sitting on crates and later to a livery stable. 750 million people, missionologists have figured out of that came another revival to our day. Think about it. Today we have people in the White House that are spirit filled, walking the, the halls of the White House. In the White House there are Bible studies going on every week Never before has this ever happened. There are people that are spirit-filled in the White House that are praying over the leaders now as we speak now. Who would ever thought that'd be possible in years past? 
I think God is raising up a prophetic army for this present generation, preparing us for a new awakening and a second return of Jesus Christ. I think sometimes when we're local here, we are a small church, and we don't see a lot of things happening, maybe at our area or in around our world here. But I want to tell you across the world, there are some incredible things happening through intercessory prayer, through the prophetic voice, through the outpouring of what God is doing around the world. There are some amazing things that are happening. Don't, don't look at the present, your little circle. You're going to have to look above. You're going to have to get your eyes above and look and see what God is doing across the world. Paul says in Ephesians 4.11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. There is a, an army that is rising up across the world. There are people that I read about that were, they, they, they used to be a fireman. And now they're writing books and they're prophesying. People, God is just picking people up here and there and just putting his hand on them and saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use you to speak to thousands of people or to hundreds of people. And I've never seen anything like it. They're just everywhere. They're all over the world. God is raising up this army to speak to the world, to speak and decree the word of the Lord. And in Ezekiel 37, we were talking about earlier, it was the restoration of Israel. God is going to restore, and that's the, the vision that, that Ezekiel had of the restoration of God's people. But God is, is wanting to restore people today in our world and all these people we see burning buildings God wants to redeem these people God wants to redeem our culture that is so lost today and I had Bar put this on the bottom dear father let the rain of your spirit fall on me we, we need we need a renewing of the spirit we definitely need that renewing of the spirit today and God is wanting to do that for us. Amen. If we'll just open up our hearts, if we'll get rid of our pride and we'll open up our hearts, God will make us a part of that army that he's raising up to speak to the nation and to speak to people right here where we live. Amen. Do you believe that? Let's worship a little bit. I'm going to release some things from the piano. And let's just worship a little bit if we could.